Okay, power system protection. A lot of people say this is a very tough subject and tough course, but as anything tough goes, you just have to get through it. And if you do take it, and it's a very added value subject because it teaches you about the whole power system in nature and how things actually work and how you actually... A lot of little things are learned in power system protection that you're not going to learn anywhere else. And therefore, even though it is, it is a tough, which is not really tough, but it's worth it to take it. Okay. A lot of lecturers, you just go in first day one and say like power system protection. Oh, you're going to start with a DC trip circuit. You're going to do this, you're going to do that. And then show you a bunch of lousy schematic diagrams and blah, 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 blah. All right. To me, that is all wrong because you need to know the purpose. What is the purpose? Are you learning this? Why are you learning this for? So the purpose of power system protection is that so you can avoid what you call STDs, okay? As well as STD, system turning disaster. If you want to avoid system turning into a disaster. So when you want to avoid STDs, you go and look for protection. So a good protection will avoid all this disaster, okay? That is what protection is for. So what are the examples of STDs? So what are examples of disaster? Okay, one, you have blackout. That's a very bad disaster. And you want to avoid that at all costs. It just, it's very hassle to put, to, to put together back a system that is already blacked out. Cold starting is a, has, is a nightmare and you never want that to happen. Number two, you do not want any, any ex equipment explosion. Yeah, damage of equipment. Equipment damage. You do not want like the whole system is functioning fine, but then if you have a, something a fault and you do not clear it in time, things will explode and then kaboom and then you have that down and you cannot service it anymore and then you have, you have to cut supply and you cannot make your supply to people and that's bad. So we do not want that. Number three and also maybe not as important, but loss of life, yeah. Loss of life. People, you don't really teach this in the subject, but you cannot really measure it. But loss of life is something that can happen because if a fault does happen and then it can shock someone and then they can possibly, possibly, maybe not, but possibly die. And it may or may not be a good thing. So you want to avoid that as well. So these are the main things that you want to avoid with the help of protection. You want to avoid blackout. You want to avoid equipment damage. And you want to avoid any loss of life that can contribute to that. So... In power system protection, how do you want to avoid those things? First, you look for symptoms. Same to STDs, you want to look for symptoms that if, that if any STDs will exist. So what are the symptoms that we're looking for? Because when those three things happen, when these three things happen, it's already too late. That means everything's gone. You, you basically, your objective is failed. So before those things happen, you will look for symptoms. What are the red flags? For, okay, one, one is under frequency. One of the things you look for is under frequency. Why is it important? Okay, how does it come in? As you know, the grid operates in maybe a 50 hertz in most of the uh, most of the world and 60 hertz in some in America and half of Japan. So these are the two main frequencies you operate in, 50 hertz and 60 hertz. But okay, imagine our power system is something like this. It's like a mountain, and then as a car or a four-wheel drive trying cl climbing uphill. Oh, you're going uphill and the car is basically your machine your generators your generators is the vehicle and the people inside the car is the load that means if there is more people in the in your system or in the country that's using electricity there's more machines being turned on and there's more that means there are more people in the load so if there's more people in the load, your generators, you have to kick, up, kick it up a notch, you know, they have to generate more to make the balance. Okay, our frequency is basically the speed at our car is going up the mountain. Because, you know, uh, like in, you learn in motors, the speed of a motor is basically 120 frequency uh, number of poles, yeah. So a frequency has a direct correlation to speed. <clears throat> If your car is moving too fast, that means it's over frequency. So if suddenly your generators are there, they're just generating at certain X meg megawatt. And then uh, the people uh, demanding, they said, okay, we're using a load X plus 50 megawatt. 
damn, you added a 50 into that. And so your generators cannot cope up. With the, you have to add another extra 50 into the generators. And before that happens, and it, the generators will add a 50 gradually and slowly. It takes a system response. But before that happens, your whole car will slow down. It was like just the car is running at the speed at 50 hertz. Suddenly you just pop in 50 people in back into their back seat. And then across the car, you're like, oh, suddenly it slowed down. And that's what you call under frequency. Under frequency is a result of imbalance of demand and supply. Imbalance of demand and supply. And you might say, that, hey, okay, yeah, I understand all this demand of imbalance supply, blah, blah, blah. And if there is too much supply and too little demand, it goes under frequency. And if it's under frequency, it can be bad because system is becomes unstable because our generators cannot keep up. And then uh, the whole thing may collapse because it's unstable. That's too many people on a car and then the car cannot move anymore. It's like stacking Jenka and then the Jenka just, there's too much load on top and then just collapse the whole thing down. So why is it? Why is protection? In, how does protection kick in? See, protection can detect under frequency, and then it determine which one you want to load shed. You know, you perform what you call a load shed. It will shed off the load. So that, okay, this, this we need to uh, cut off, trim the fat a bit, cut off fifty. Okay, we're gonna cut off fifty, select fifty, and then disconnect from the system. Like, okay, you guys are gonna suffer blackout, and we're gonna fuck you up for a bit, so that the rest of the system can remain healthy and whole. <clears throat> and that's, that's what we're going to do. So that's under frequency in a nutshell. Number two, we do, what are the symptoms of a uh, bad thing? Okay, after, other than under frequency, what you want to look at is uh, under voltage. Under voltage is pretty bad himself actually. Um, in such a sense that uh, it will mostly be affected to the, um, to the manufacturing companies, the Semiconductor companies, yeah, those semiconductor, they're going to suffer the most. And under frequency, that means a voltage of let's say maybe 240 volts. Suddenly it drops to maybe like uh, 170 or like, holy God, because it's normally just plus 10%, plus minus 10%, I think it's something like that, yeah. If it drops to suddenly 170, some of the machines may lose accuracy and they cannot function properly and when the whole thing gone, the whole chain, the whole chain of production, production chain is just lost itself, and then it incurs a lot of losses there, and they cannot use any of the chips that they manufacture anymore. So, it's very bad for them. For domestic users, under voltage can mean that some of your machine, uh, some of your things cannot function properly. And under voltage is how do you cause by under voltage? Okay, I'll go a bit briefly. How is under voltage caused? Let's say there's a supply here, it goes down, and then there are a few ropes. So these are all users. Users, users, user, 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 user. Okay, let's say one of the users here has a fault. Straight down to earth. And all the this will suck up all the current. Let me use another ink. This is gonna suck up all the current from the other places. And this voltage here is supposed to be 1.0, like per unit. Voltage is supposed to be 1.0, but because of this fault, this will drop to maybe like 0.3 per unit. And like, hey, why does that happen? Why does uh, the voltage drop when there is a when there's a fault? Okay, some people are. It's hard to. It's a bit hard to understand, but I like to use an analogy to picture it. <clears throat> Let's say you have a pipe, a water pipe, and then you're supplying the water pipe to a few places. Boom! 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 Yeah. So we place A, B, C, and D. Okay, let's say pipe number B, it had a sudden burst. The pipe just burst out because there's a fault. Okay, people do not understand a lot of this because, but fault, fault is just where, where it's not supposed to happen. It's just another word for something that's not supposed to happen. That's why I call it fault. It's supposed to happen. Short circuit is a fault because it's not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to have a short circuit. Suddenly the current jumps from a live wire to a ground is called a fault because you, do, you didn't design that to happen. The current is supposed to go from your line, your lines to your load, to your houses, and it's to be consumed. Not to jump, suddenly just jump to a ground and just, yeah, that's not, that's what I call a fault. When it's not supposed to happen. So when a pipe bursts, 
That means it's not supposed to happen. When the pipe bursts, all the water was just like, you know, oh my God, there's a free path. Oh my God, I'm just gonna, you know, sunk in area, go, 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 go to fill up the hole and then just leak out that way. That's what happens to all the current as well. Current behaves similar to water, just flows out. So what, what happened here is that the water pressure drops. Water pressure. Because at a certain burst, everything just drops. Yes, it's, it's very easy to imagine right now, right? Because water pressure and voltage, actually it's the sim very similar things. Pressure is just, well, vo voltage is just a pressure of how much current can you push through a resistance. That's why it's called V equals to IR. The higher the V, the more current can push through a certain resistance. So water pressure is, the higher the water pressure, the more water current you can push through the pipe. Same thing. So when there is that happen, water pressure drops. Same with the voltage. The voltage drops when there's a fault that happens because all the current will rush to clear, do rush to feed the fault. And so because of that, you lose a lot of water pressure and you lose a lot of voltage. That's how it's called. That's why you call under voltage. There's also the case of uh, over voltage, but that's rarely happens. And usually that's not a problem because over voltage means that you have excess of supply. So there are other ways of countering that. So these are the two main things which is an under voltage and a under frequency. So these are the two things that we want to uh, curb as much as possible in protection to be able to maintain our system as healthy and as whole as possible. So that's all for the first video. See you next time.